My name is McClay Harriot. I'm a photographer. I shoot predominantly on film and use a Leica M6. I'm heavily based in the music industry, so I shoot press photos, portraiture, bands and musicians, and when I can, I go on the road touring. I've toured with Laneway Festival for the past five years nationally, which is an amazing opportunity to be able to jump around Australia and have that fly on the wall aspect of being on planes, buses, tour vans. Photography was sort of around me. My dad shot a lot of pictures growing up. There's always a camera and dad used to have this old SLR in his top sock drawer. And I remember grabbing it when I was younger and running around the house and framing stuff up. There was no film in it, but just the sound and the shutter and like the blacking out of the, the screen, you know, an SLR. I, I spent so much time doing that. And then when I got to an age where I was old enough, dad had given me some film and I had friends in bands. And it was years later, I heard this interview on the radio, um, a music photographer, Sophie Howard uh, on Triple J. And she was talking about this new book that she'd just released. And I ended up getting that book and the photos blew my mind, like a scrapbook of all the best memories of summer festivals. It was her documentation of Big Day Out. And I reached out to her and it was a month, few months later, she got back in contact with me and this relationship started where I would come up from Wollongong to her studio apartment in Bondi and I would refile negatives and I would ask questions and she would give me film to try. When I'm shooting my photos, I'm really trying to tell the bigger picture. I love the documentary style of photography. A little bit more to the story. Why is that person there? Why is there a pack of cigarettes on the counter? The clocks at this time. Trying to create a story around the moment that's happening. You know, I have an interest in all this equipment and old objects that carry stories in them, like cameras, you know, like microphones. How many people have summoned to this microphone? When did I become aware of Leica? I knew of Leica, it was this like, it's like the holy grail of cameras. <laughs> but I remember I had, a, I had a teacher at the Australian Centre of Photography who had one. And it was the first, I remember the first time I held one and just the weight is something you don't forget. The feel, the, like, you know, it's, it's thin, it fits in the hand. It's made for war and it's like, I feel like being on tour is like going into battle, especially being in the pit. I shoot out of my left eye, being a rangefinder, the viewfinder is placed over to the far left of the camera, which sort of allows me to um, uh, hide behind the camera, which is, I'm not shy, but I kind of feel very secure when I can tuck up and hide behind this piece of metal for protection, good protection from swinging guitars, flying drumsticks. How fast can I put in a roll of film? When I'm tour fit, I feel like I'm pretty quick, maybe 10 seconds. I think like, you know, there's so much talk around, it doesn't matter what you use to take the image, it's about taking the image. I think that's true, but I've been taking photos and photos I like, but as soon as I started shooting on my M6, it was something clicked for me. I need this camera to do my job. It's discreet, it's quiet, it blends in, it, um, it's light on the body. I, this, this camera's been on my body probably almost every day since I, since I bought it. The idea of me when I'm taking a photo, the end product is I want to see it hung on a wall, not on a digital screen. It sort of plays into that whole story of shooting on film. It's, it completes that cycle, bringing it back to a physical item, a tactile item that you can hold and flick through that you can give to a friend or that you can walk into a gallery space and see hung on a wall. When it stuff's blown up, it pulls apart the grain and you are more submerged in the, the image. And that's sort of like how I want my photos to be experienced. The photos I chose for this exhibition kind of sit outside what I would normally show. It's sort of like my unseen work. There's so much I don't share. And I tried to really focus in on Australian-based music festivals, my time on site with Australian artists and Australian music festivals.
I have so many boxes of just negatives. It's like trying to keep up with how many I'm shooting. Uh, bad dreams. No, no, no. I've got tubs full. <laughs> Middle kids, bad dreams, gang of youths in the US on tour, gang of youths in Mexico on tour. Um, it can get pretty crazy, especially trying to find negs for rescans or for prints. Izzy press shots, I found them. They were on the shelf. I put them aside <laughs> I forgot I put them aside. Yeah, this shoot was, um, this was a special uh, shoot because I've loved what the preachers have done for years and um, I love Izzy as a front woman of an Australian rock band because she's like, there's so much energy there and um, it's so authentic, it's not made up. Um, and to shoot live, it's an amazing performer. Going into COVID and not picking up the camera for a number of months and then Izzy reached out wanting to do a series of just very raw, stripped back portraits um, of just her. But it was interesting going through over the last five or six months while we were in lockdown, looking at a lot of my older photos and taking notice of what stood out to me uh, and what mattered. And it, we, we went for a very stripped down approach. It was just her, one set of clothes in a naturally lit studio, mostly all of it on my Leica. Uh, just the opportunity to take photos again was exciting. And that fresh pressure of like when you've had those first photo shoots, um, like when you first started doing photos, like it's, it was like a clean slate. The Leica in those sort of situations is so valuable because it's basically invisible. It's not big and clumbersome. It's quiet, it's as if it kind of disappears when you're behind it, um, which allows for more of a intimate, genuine moment. The thing with shooting on film is those like happy mistakes you kind of get where you're not really planning. <laughs> you're, you've set everything up and you're kind of just rolling with it, but stuff might be moving really fast. You sort of got, get given these little gems, these little nuggets of film gold that you couldn't have really planned for any other way, except for just sort of taking those risks with the film. The photo of um, Jack River at the, at the aquarium was, I'd, I'd shot a bunch of photos of the jellyfish and then I ran out of frames and I ran out of color film and I rolled, I think I rolled back like a few roll, like wines on the crank and reshot over the top of it. Just reshot the portraits over the top. Well, it's crazy because there was this changing LED light in the jellyfish tank um, so there was like blue jellyfish, there was red jellyfish, there was green, and I sh I'd shot a number of them. And it ended up with this superimposed, like kind of apocalyptic red jellyfish uh, hanging over her face and over her body, over her silhouette. It was one of those not knowing what you're gonna get, but just having an idea in your head and trying to create something. And when you get the film back and it's there is like, Magic. When I'm working, to not be looking at the back of the camera and to focus in on the moment, it's almost like a meditation. And it just allows me to fall into the moment a lot more and be more present when I'm taking the photos.